February 7th, 2019. Welcome back to the Warpath. This is Rod Kuntz on the Warpath Alliance, and we're here today going to answer some questions. And uh, this came from just topical things that uh, you might be thinking, other people are thinking, when you're on the Warpath, what kind of things come up? So, question number one, let's shoot. Well, first of all, tell me what the Warpath is about. <laughs> the Warpath, if you haven't already uh, looked at a copy of the book, the Warpath is an acronym for uh, character traits that everyone has, that all leaders have to have and develop. And when you're on the Warpath, you're always going to have resistance. So the acronym for each particular letter also has a counter assault, a counter attack that will come against that particular character trait and then you're going to need to arm yourself with the right weapon uh, to be able to overcome that challenge. So your character is constantly under attack. Your leadership is always under attack and you need to know where it's coming from and what you're going to do to combat it. So that's life on the warpath and you need that direction and you need to know what's out there just to be prepared. So when you were doing research for this book, who were some of the people that influenced you the most? That is really a loaded question, and, and I've been asked this once before. Um, and the, <laughs> it, it's almost impossible to narrow it down to any one, because th there are so many, and honestly, you can learn something from absolutely everybody you're in contact with. However, to narrow it into, down to two, I can do that. There is one, the first one is Jesus Christ, and regardless of your spiritual affiliation or religious, religious affiliation, uh, look at the historical Jesus, and he made more change to the world from the, his point of entry uh, to modern day than any other single person in the course of history. So that is the first and foremost. And the second is, believe it or not, on the opposite end of that would be Genghis Khan, who, although he was ruthless and vicious, and uh, I, I can't say anything good about him in that regard, however, he left an indelible imprint on mankind. In fact, 20% of uh, all humans on Earth today are attributed to having his DNA. So he, he has left an indelible mark there. But the interesting thing about Genghis Khan, uh, the thing I found fascinating that made him such a strong leader was that he actually appreciated everybody, every religion, every culture. So if you didn't agree with him and you stood in his way, he, he simply obliterated you, annihilated you. However, he, he did have the appreciation for people and their skills, and he would use anybody uh, on his team. Uh, and, you know, that's a character trait that, unfortunately, you don't see a lot. People, if, if you know, I, I always say people always surround themselves, bad leaders surround themselves with yes men, and that's definitely something Genghis Khan did not do. And so that's, that's the opposite side of that spectrum. And those are probably the top two, but then every other... Coaches are, are always good because they're good team builders and military leaders, especially, and not even necessarily the, the leaders of, of large battalions, but individuals who have won the Medal of Honor. It's the little man, the, the individuals that actually win battles in the long run. And so that's kind of it in a, in a nutshell. How have you applied what you've learned from their examples? How have I applied what I learned from their examples? I think the biggest thing that, that I could say is all of my research was an affirmation of what I already knew to be true. And I believe that everyone is inherently a leader and has that, that knowledge and that skill set. And for whatever reason, we don't tap into it or it's not necessary to tap into it with you know current vocations lifestyles whatever um, so it, really all the research I did it, great leaders 
the tactics they used, how they developed people, just resonated in my spirit with what I already knew to be true. And I was just trying to identify those traits. The, the big thing was just trying to boil it all down. There are so many different leadership styles, so many management styles, trying to boil down the essence of what really matters. And that's what Warpath is. It's, it's the boiled down, condensed version, what matters most. And that, that's what my research really did, was just uncover the, the baseline. What were some of your favorite leadership qualities? Not just in what your research was, but in, in the environment that you've worked in, and the many environments you've worked in, what are some of your favorite, and which ones do you employ? Well, all of them on the warpath. So you... you... I, I can't single anyone out because you you use all of your leadership qualities. They're intermeshed. It's intertwined. It, it, the Warpath character traits are your leadership DNA. It's that, that double helix. Everything is connected. Everything works together. So you can't have one and not the other. You, you can be an okay manager if you have some of the character traits. You will never be a great manager if you don't have and deploy all of them. And that's something that I, I did witness in my time in the corporate world was there were people that had some of the traits, but when when they defaulted to things that didn't resonate with good leaders, they were counteracting the traits that were necessary. So it, you really have to be on guard to be a good manager, to be a good leader, uh, to be a good team member. You have to always be on guard and always be an active participant in your leadership style. So do you think all leaders need a college education? I'm going to re reiterate that question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restate that question. Okay. Do I think all leaders need a college education? Uh -huh. No. 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 <laughs> um, absolutely not. And that's not saying I'm against college. I'm not against college. It is not necessary to great leadership. That's it in a nutshell. Um, and that would require an entire new discourse book uh, to deal with my reasoning for that. But absolutely no. You don't have to have a college education to be a great leader. What made you choose a college education? It was more of an accident. <laughs> I, I just was following... Um, a path and at that point in time I have to say it was just my destiny was to end up in college and I couldn't speak I wouldn't have been able to answer that last question had I not gone to college so uh, in order to be able to look at an issue from all sides and give a, a fair example I ab obviously had to understand the process and have succeeded in that process to be able to to answer can answer candidly and honestly Makes sense. Would you be where you are now without a college education? Yes. And no. I, I honestly believe I would still be here today because this is where I am supposed to be. This is where I was meant to be. And there were things, when, when you read Warpath, there are several stories that were pivotal that, that I learned, life lessons that I learned from professors in college, from individuals I met in college, friendships I formed in college, had those major life lessons not happened there, I'm absolutely positively convinced they would have happened elsewhere. They would have happened outside of college. They would have happened in a different way. Different people would have come into my life to teach me those life lessons because I am where I am supposed to be today. And that's the, the long part of that answer. Um, where are people on their journey? They're where they're supposed to be. If, if you've made mistakes and you're making a comeback, it doesn't matter. You're where you're supposed to be right now, today. And finally, what would you tell your younger self? <laughs> I want everyone to ask this question of themselves after I'm done answering it. What would you tell your younger self looking back? I would tell my younger self two things. 
that I am brave. And to believe it. And number two, that I matter. And when I was younger, I didn't believe either of those things, even though they were both true. And that's an important, <laughs> that's an important lesson to know on the warpath. You are brave, braver than you know, braver than you can imagine. It's in you and you matter. You matter a lot. So stick with it, be on the warpath, and I'll see you at the top.